Texas knocks off a ranked opponent at home for the first time since 2008. This week, the Horns head north to take on Oklahoma State. All this and more coming up on College Crossfire. The hell's the rest of it? Hello, hello, and welcome into this week's episode of College Crossfire. I'm your host, Jeff Barker. Let's go ahead and introduce you to tonight's panel. First up, we have Allie Fleming. Next up, Jet Beecham and Alanis King making her first ever appearance on the show. Guys, how's it going? Thanks for coming on. Thank you. We're going good. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Speak forever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, no one's up. All right, well, let's get right into it, guys, as we always do in the fall. Begin tonight's show with UT football. And for the first time in a while, we actually have something positive to discuss. The Horns snapped their nine-game losing streak against ranked opponents at home on Saturday with a convincing 33-16 win over the West Virginia Mountaineers. Guys, what impressed you the most from Texas's win on Saturday? Allie. Well, I think that what impressed me the most is what has been impressing me all season, the Texas defense. It was incredible. I mean, Clint Trickett didn't complete a pass over 21 yards. Cedric Reed finally had a breakout game. I mean, that safety, I was right. It was incredible. I was so excited. But um, the run game actually did impress me. Finally, Jonathan Gray goes over 100 yards, three touchdowns. They're pretty much responsible for putting those Texas points on the board. So I got to say, the run game and the defense. Yeah, I mean, mentioned the running game. Going into the Texas Tech game, uh, Texas hadn't had a 100-yard rusher the entire season. Then you get Malcolm Brown, 100 yards in the right. Texas Tech game. And then Jonathan Gray, good to see him finally get going after the injury. Three touchdowns, 101 yards in, in the West Virginia game. Really good to see. I happy to finally see it. Jet? So definitely, I would say, uh, definitely the run game, the defense. But especially the run game now. In the last two weeks, you know, as you mentioned, Jeff, Malcolm Brown now with a 100-yard game. Then Jonathan Gray finally has his breakout game as well. He had decent and, like, really, Texas has been had trouble. Like, they ground and pound, ground and pound, but they don't break long runs as much as other people do. And Jonathan Gray finally broke a run. And he actually broke multiple runs, had really long touchdowns, got in there, did his work. You know, when Malcolm Brown got hurt, he still had more carries, but Jonathan Gray came in. You know, it was only 10 carries, had over 100 yards, and I believe it was two or three TDs which is really, really good for the run game. And, you know, West Virginia defense is okay, but they've been playing great, um, and our defense shined. And, you know, Cedric Reed finally had his breakout game. Three sacks, the safety, everything just worked for Texas, except for swoops really still being awkward. But, you know, I think the run game is really what we take away. Okay, Jet, am, am I crazy on this one? You mentioned Jonathan Gray, too. Do you guys think there was like a couple of those where he could have turned the Jets on a little bit more? He still looked a little bit timid yeah, on, on some of the cuts. I, th but I think it's I think it's really the injury still. He's really still like even so far in the season. Like this is his first game where he's really felt comfortable. Probably that's, was, that's probably why it took him so long to get. Yeah, I mean, definitely a productive day for Jet. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Alanis? I got to agree with Jet and Allie. I mean, our offense was just really strong, uh, especially in the first half and the second quarter. Uh, we really saw a strong offense. We saw them making passes. We saw them making catches, getting those run yards. Uh, when they came back out for the second for the second half, though, I mean, we saw them revert back to that old offense, what we've been used to seeing. And I really got to say that we just got to keep that offense going throughout the entirety of the game. Um, what really impressed me, though, is the fact that Texas came out and they kind of proved everybody wrong. I mean, everybody was um, thinking that they wouldn't have a chance for a bowl berth. And now here we are with one game and they might have a bowl berth. So, I mean, that, really sh that was really impressive to me, the fact that they could just come out and prove everybody wrong against a ranked opponent. Any negative takeaways from the game? Uh, just honestly, it's just you can still see the immaturity in swoops. It's just with, swoops. I mean, you know, he actually was having a decent game. You know, a lot of times when he throws the deep balls, it's really like the wide receivers that are really saving him. Like Jackson will go up for it. John Harris especially has saved plenty of interceptions at swoops. Probably should have thrown this season. So I think really just him, him accuracy and decision making wise is still a little, little young. I mean, about. totally. I mean, that the deep ball that he loves to throw down the sideline did not connect at all second half. Really, I, oh, the second half was hurtful watching swoops, honestly. Yeah, def yeah I got to agree. Very, it just can't connect in the second half, and that's his problem. You just got to keep, stay confident and not get nervous and not throw away the ball. Yeah, I mean, 
it would be really interesting to see. I mean, how good this team could be. I mean, next year, you know, swoops could mature and grow. Maybe they'll find somebody else to to jump in there. But definitely some consistency uh, at the quarterback position is what Texas needs right now. Yeah. Going to start everyone off with a point here. Now, guys, with the Longhorns' hopes of a bowl game on the line, they'll travel to Stillwater to take on Oklahoma State Saturday. The Cowboys have lost their last three games, but Stillwater's no easy place to play. To make matters worse for the Horns, weather will most likely play a major factor. Temperature at kickoff expected to be below freezing, even with a chance of snow. All things considered here, guys, what are the keys to victory for Texas in this matchup? Jeff. So, I mean, as you mentioned, with the weather, that means the defense is already at an advantage for both teams because usually defense plays with weather, so the offense has a hard time holding on to the ball, getting passes, you know, really being, really starting to get comfortable and confident. So, I think Texas defense obviously showed great in this game against a really high-powered West Virginia offense. And, you know, the Oklahoma, I mean, Oklahoma State is really not that great on offense this year as they normally are, so I think defense is going to stay consistent and play a great game. So, that's what the real key is. The offense has to stay consistent. Um, you know, with with Swoops being, you know, he has a good game, then he doesn't. He stays confident. You think he's playing great, and then he kind of lets you down, usually in the third quarter, too. Um, but hopefully we, they, they, hopefully they keep on getting the running game. And, you know, if it's cold, running the ball is the best. If it's wet, running the ball is the best. That's how it works. So, you know, hopefully they can get the 100-yard rush game again for the third straight week. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, I got to agree. It's that offense. I mean, our offense just has to – stay strong throughout the entirety of the game. Um, we got to see them making those passes, getting that run game going, especially with the weather. But we see them just falter like part of the way through the game. We can see them play strong really well for a short amount of time, but then they kind of just fall off. And the main thing that Texas has to do is Texas has to stay strong throughout the whole entire game. I mean, uh, Oklahoma State's coming off three straight losses. Texas is coming off two straight wins. They've got the momentum going into the game. They've got that bowl berth weighing on it. They just have to carry that momentum and go into it. So Lannis wants to see four quarters quality football out of that's the Horns. That's what I want to One see. One consistent so. game all year. May maybe we'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> One so game. That's, a little, that's a lot to ask. No. <laughs> Allie, what do you think? I think that this is probably as close to a must-win game as the Horns like, are going to have definitely this year. They have to win this one to go a bowl eligible, but I think they can do it. I mean, the OSU offense, I know they've been playing the class of the Big 12 their past three games, but they're averaging 11 points a game. And their defense, I'm sorry, they've allowed 25 sacks this year. This is perfect timing for Cedric Reed when he's finally getting his mojo back. I think this is just asking. I think that their defense is definitely just going to play their consistent game, but it's establishing the run also that's what's going to be the key to success for the Longhorns. Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely going to be a, a low-scoring battle. I think I'm going to give Allie the point on this one, like those stats that you came with. The, maybe Cedric Reed finally in his mojo in the West Virginia yeah. game. Oklahoma State line, not very good. This team, very similar to, to Texas in a lot of ways. I mean, not a yeah. new coach. Just still got a, still Mike Gundy over there. Uh, but, you know, Young team, inexperienced quarterback. So it should be a very interesting. Oklahoma State five and four, three games or two games left after Texas. So kind of in the same spot. Should be a good game there. We give Allie the point on this one now. While expectations are always high for Texas football, the Horns men's basketball team enters the season with high expectations of their own. For the first time since 2009, Texas is ranked in the preseason top 10 and their first chance to prove themselves worthy of all this attention will come Friday at home against North Dakota State. Now, last week we talked uh, about whether the Horns can live up to this hype that they're getting right now, but tonight, guys, we're just going to go with basic uh, preseason predictions. Alanis. I mean, the Horns are coming off last year. They had a 24-11 and 11 season, very lackluster. Um, but Rick Barnes has built our offense. We've got top recruit, Miles Turner, coming in, leading that team. And I just have really strong hopes for the Longhorns this year. I mean, we're not going to get a real feel for it uh, just yet because we're against North Dakota, Alcorn State. But once that team gets gelled together, starts taking on the really strong opponents, I think we're going to have a pretty good chance with them. Man, tough critic. I thought, I thought last year was, was pretty solid. That was a turnaround season for the Horns. Allie, what do you think? That's how I felt. Third in the Big 12. And then I, they don't make a lot of adjustments in the offseason. They just make one really big one. Miles Turner, obviously. I'm going to go out on, on a limb here and say best front court in the Big 12. I mean, Ridley, Holmes, Turner. That's a I think 
not lacking size. Safe, safe statement, I think. Right, yeah. Right. Um, I think that, you know, you get third in the Big 12, and then you, I think they have a shot at second. I don't know if they can beat Kansas for the conference title, but I think we're headed in the right direction. Okay. Definitely. Jeff? See, I, I personally believe Kansas is actually going to take a decline this year, and Texas will bump up to that Big 12 spot, be number one, win the Big 12. Um, I predict maybe getting a two or three seed. I just think, you know, as, as she mentioned, mentioned, you know, the height that Texas now has and the length, like they already – were great top ten in blocks last year, and then you add a seven footer, and it's and you know so you're just looking you're thinking about defense. I'm thinking about defense all the way down low, you know the guard play maybe still a little iffy, but Isaiah Taylor played really great last year. So I think Texas really has a great great chance to win the Big 12 this year, and I, I'm predicting maybe a Final Four appearance. Yeah, I, I'm going to give uh, Jet the points on this one. I definitely think the only thing Texas really needs right now, Ali mentioned the great front court. Yeah. Only thing they're really lacking right now is maybe a quality so, go-to yeah. shooter. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, maybe a little bit more guard play. Guys, that'll take us to our first break of the night. Up next, our panelists will choose between Baylor and TCU. We'll play a little buy or sell in the NFL. Don't go anywhere. It's College Crossfire. Welcome back to the program. Here's how the scores look after round one. We got Allie, last week's champion with two, tied up uh, top the lead. Jet, one of our veteran panels, first time on this semester, yeah. though. He's got two, and Alanis, the newcomer, with one. Let's go right into Big 12 football now. TCU and Baylor both had impressive wins on Saturday and are still in the hunt for a spot in the college football playoff. Right now, the playoff committee has TCU over Baylor, the Horn Frogs at number four, and the Bears at number seven. But, guys, if both teams win out and end the season at 11 and one, who are you giving the nod to? Allie. TCU. I okay, think if, if that Baylor game is in a neutral location, I think TCU still wins. I don't think Baylor's able to come, come back and just have Bryce Petty start slinging the ball down the field. And I know it's going to be a little difficult because TCU, they're going to have to keep blowing teams out. They don't have a strong last three games, while Baylor does play Kansas State in that last game. So that does keep, like, Baylor will be, have more attention, but I still think TCU. Okay, Jet, what do you think? So here's the, here's the thing. I, I just think, you know, now that it's a more of a human system, um, you look at it, if they both go 11-1 and one and say it is just between those two teams, like say they're 4-5 and five and it's right on that edge, I think you still have to give it to Baylor. I just think just because, I mean, I know TCU was up. You can say, oh, they were up 21. Baylor only won by, I think it was three. It was a high-scoring game. TCU's been playing great this season. But, you know, I think when it all comes down to the end of it, Baylor still beat TCU. I just, I just, I can't take a team that beats someone and just put them right there. Same record, same everything. And especially as she mentioned, with Baylor having a stricter schedule and a harder schedule as as time goes on, like those games at the end of the year matter so much more than earlier games. So I think the way the way it should be, Baylor would would should jump TCU just because solely because they beat them. Okay, Alanis. I'm gonna have to go with the committee on this one. I'd have to say TCU too. Um, I just think you put TCU and Baylor in that position, and Baylor just won by three points. I mean, it was a very slim margin. You put them back in that position, either one could win, and I'm going to just say TCU over Baylor. Okay, I, I can see the points uh, that Allie and Alanis are making, but I, I'm going to have to go with Jet on this one. I just think by the end of the season, by the time it's all said and done, you know, with the human element, the, the new college football playoff committee, I think they're going to have a hard time ignoring the head-to-head. The -head. I mean, and you guys are mentioning you know, TCU uh, was up 21 in the fourth quarter. But I think, I mean, if anything, that, that shows more about Baylor yeah. and their resolve to come back and, and win that game at home. They did have the 41-27 loss yeah. uh, away to West Virginia, but I'm going to give Jet the point on this one. I think Baylor gets the nod, um, you know, if, if all goes as planned and they, they both yeah. end the season 11-1. and Because also Baylor would win that tiebreaker and be the Big 12 champion. Yeah. There's no Big 12 playoff game. But moving on now, so much going on in the NFL. Couldn't settle on just one topic for the show tonight. So we're going to play a little buy or sell. Same rules as always. I'll present an argument. You guys tell me whether or not you're buying it or selling it. First up, the Eagles can win the NFC East with Mark Sanchez at quarterback. Anybody jump in? Sell. No way. Selling it? Cowboys? No. Woo! Okay. All right. Yeah. Jet? So, so here's this. Of course, I'm buying, first of all, because the Eagles already have a good record. And they have a really good defense. When you look at it, they have the top scoring defense in the NFL. So I, when I don't know if they have the best defense. They have a very well, opportunistic yes, exactly. defense. Exactly. But I mean, and special teams. opportunistic, yes. Still puts points on the board for Mark Sanchez. Mark Sanchez really only has to play decent for the Eagles to really shine. I mean, they have great playmakers. Is there any shades of uh, Mark Sanchez in his first two years with the Jets? Yeah. yeah. Hey, well, that's, that's the thing. We'll <laughs> see because it's almost the teams are kind of like Eagles defense, not as good as the Jets back in the day. 
But I think the way that they help out the offense, even they had a pick six in the last game. Like, it just helps. Okay, so we got a, a sell. Or no, you're selling, right? I'm selling. And a buy. Buy or sell. I'm buying. I mean, uh, NFC East. You don't see. We're not seeing a really dominant team that just stands out. And I really think Mark Sanchez, he can just perform with the Eagles. And we've seen that. And we've seen him do better than he was doing with the Jets before he came over to the Eagles. So I really think they can hold it and they can win the NFC East. Okay, now, guys, uh, moving on. A, a team that we don't talk about too much down here in Texas, the Browns will win the NFC North. Jet, you want to start this one? Uh, yeah, I think I'm actually going to have to buy because, I mean, honestly, the Browns, good defense. And the thing about the Browns is they actually, it's weird, they find a way to win the games that they shouldn't, and they lose the games that they really should. So the thing is, I don't know, I, I really don't know the makeup of this team. Brandon Hoyer, I mean, has actually been playing really great this year. So it's actually surprising. And, you know, they do have kind of a, a tandem of running backs, you know, with Tate even starting right there. So I think just when it comes to the nitty-gritty, especially with the Steelers and the Ravens there, I think the Browns could actually win that division. Okay, Jets buying. Alanis? I'm going to buy, too. Um, I mean, they're coming off a really strong win over the Bengals. They're 6-3, and three and they're leading it right now, and I think they're going to hold it. Okay, Allie? I'm going to buy. It was difficult. They have a solid schedule ahead, and they have lost to the Steelers and the Ravens already. But they routed the Bengals, and I think that I think that they're just going to move forward going on, so I'm buying. All right, I'm going to I'm gonna make it a sweep here, too. I'm going to buy the Browns. I'm, I'm buying low, though. What do you guys think? You, you guys buying low, I'm with too? You, yeah. I think it's really – I mean, when, when you look at Flacco can go off almost any game. You know, even though it's weird, Flacco, Ben Roethlisberger can, can go off any game. Pittsburgh, too. I mean, incredibly <laughs> inconsistent with Pittsburgh. <laughs> I mean, Dude, the highest of the Rogers high, Burger the lowest like of the five, low. Five, six touchdowns one game, and then the next game they're only putting up 13. That's, and yeah, and, the and Jets. that's really how the AFC North is going right now, so it's, yeah. you never know, really. All right, guys, our last one. The struggling San Francisco 49ers, who just lost Patrick Willis, will make the playoffs. Alanis, we'll start with you on this I'm one. I'm going to sell that one. I mean, they've got two of their big players injured, Willis and Bowman, and I just don't see it happening. They're right on the edge of that playoff spot, and I don't think they're going to get it. Okay. Allie? I'm going to have to go with her, too. I think they sell. I think that this is a team that's not at full strength. And even and even if they finish 9-7, and seven, I don't think that's good enough to make the playoffs. And I don't think they can beat the Seahawks twice, which is in their schedule. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned them potentially going 9-7. and seven. I think we might see something like with the Cardinals in that division. Right. I think I think we might see them get left out. Like the Cardinals were 10-6 last year. Exactly. Didn't make the playoffs. Jet, what do you think? You I saw? mean, definite sell. So this, is, this is the hardest division in football for – honestly the last three years and you're looking at you know Super Bowl champs obviously not playing great this year Cardinals just lost Carson Palmer but they're still at what eight and one I believe and it's gonna be hard for them not to at least come up with a couple wins to make the playoffs and then you're saying that somehow the, somehow the 49ers are gonna overcome the Seahawks no way no way yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna sell on this one too it wouldn't be surprised if, if the 49ers did somehow come through and make the playoffs just with how somehow. inconsistent yeah. um, the, the Seattle Seahawks have been playing mm -hmm. and then also you know, Carson Palmer going down for, for the Cardinals. Right. But I'm going to give everyone a point for buy or sell. Cool. Excellent, excellent points all around there. Now, guys, NBA season's still very young, but we're back in full swing. Quick question here to take us into rapid fire. Which team has impressed you the most to this point? Alanis, we're going to start with you. Um, just out of being impressed, I'd definitely say probably the Houston Rockets. I mean, they're coming out um, with their – one of their strongest starts in a really long time. Um, got a strong team, and I definitely say that I'm impressed by them. Okay. Golden, Golden State Warriors. Start out 5-0, quick out of the gate, first time since 1995. So the back-to-back -back losses. I'm sure you're going to get to this, but back-to-back yeah. -back losses don't, don't, don't say too much for you? Or? Uh, to the Spurs, and then to the Suns, they had the, they had the injury excuse a little bit. They lost, and then... Um, They've been playing good, though. I have to say, I'm a Steph Curry believer. Steph Curry with the shot, man. Okay, fan of fan of Splash Brothers. Yeah. Jet. I mean, I have to take the I have to take a team that's actually less talented than both of these teams, which is the Memphis Grizzlies. One loss in the season, and they're playing really old school ball, which is start in the middle and then kick it out, really, because you got Gasol and Randolph. They're playing amazing, and you know the Grizzlies are putting it together. They put out the wins. They've beaten San Antonio. It's you know it's just they're playing. They're having a great season so far. Okay. Uh, Lance, I think it's a little bit too early on the Rockets. They, they haven't they haven't played a lot of tough competition yet. Uh, Jet, not I don't know how much I've seen from the Grizzlies. They did lose one game to the Bucks. Was on the road though, and only by one point. But I, don't, I think I'm gonna give the point to uh, the Splash Brothers here. I'm gonna forget about those two losses. I think I, I, they have impressed me. I didn't think they'd come out and start this hot, uh, you know, with new coach Steve Kerr. Uh, I'm gonna give Allie the point on this one. Break time again. Our last one of the night. Up next. 
We'll crown a winner in rapid fire, guys. Stay tuned. We'll be, just, we'll be right back in a few minutes. College Crossfire, your scores heading into rapid fire are Alley, last week's champion, with four. Jet, with four. And Alanis, the newcomer, with two. Guys, it's rapid fire, though. Everything worth double now. And if you're watching at home and you're hungry, you might want to turn away for a quick second. Our first rapid fire comes to us from Philadelphia, where Eagles quarterback Mark Sanchez celebrated his Monday night victory and his birthday with a post-game cheesesteak. Sanchez visited Pat's and Geno's, two of the city's most famous cheesesteak joints. Question here is for two points, guys. What would be your go-to post-game meal? We've seen some, some pretty good ones from, from celebrities in the past, Cam Newton with, with Waffle House, but what would yours be? I think you got to go with James Winston and uh, crab legs. Okay. Go the king crab legs. You're the king. All righty. Yeah. little crawfish boil after the game. Maybe. Yeah. All right. Um, I would go home to mom, uh, just like in old NFL commercials, and get myself some uh, chunky Campbell's uh, chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like Donovan, you know. Alanis, what are you going to say? Like some water burger or something very Texas typical. Uh, burn it off at practice the next morning or something. Okay, what would you, what would you get at, at water burger? Oh, a cheeseburger. Yeah. Okay. Just a basic make, cheeseburger. Yeah, making a butter chicken unhealthy. biscuit. Bob, a Bob. Yeah. 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 Chicken biscuit. Definitely Jet, what would what would you get? Uh, what what kind of Campbell soup? <laughs> got to go with the uh, meaty. Definitely got to go with the, meaty. Uh, yeah, beef. All right. Beef and potatoes. All right. I, th I think I'm going to go with Jed on this one with the going home to mom. I, I like it. I can get that. You know, I, would, I, would, I would be down for, for a little seafood, be down for a little Whataburger, but I think I'm going to go with uh, mama's not home cooking. You know, open a can. <laughs> it's definitely not home cooking. Toss it in there. Hey, but it's good stuff. I like that you reference the old NFL commercials. Richard Sherman makes it. Now, guys, we're, we're not promoting gambling here on the show, but for our next question, we're going to see which side of this bet you guys land on. On a Miami radio show, rapper Rick Ross said that he would bet $100,000 that the Heat will end the regular season with a better record than the Cavs. Are you guys on uh, Ricky Rose's side here? Are you pulling your wallets out for the Heat, or are you taking the Cavs? What do you guys think? Crazy, crazy from Rick Ross here? I'll go with the Heat. It's not a sure bet. I don't think I have the money or the, uh, or the uh, gut to go that high and definitely make the bet, but... The Cavs still have problems they're kind of sorting out. You know, you see how people are calling on LeBron, his leadership. I think that the Heat, Chris Bosh is finally putting up the numbers that the Heat got him to put up, finally. Mm. Yeah, so. de definitely not a surprise with Chris Bosh. Yeah. Le LeBron exits, and, and he kind of becomes that, you know. Right. And with D-Wade yeah. on the decline, kind of becomes the number one guy almost. Exactly. So Jet, what do you think? I mean, uh, what I would say is, you know, you kind of want to watch out for the injuries, too, with the Heat, because, you know, D-Wade gets injured a lot. Um, I would say I would still think it's a terrible bet. I think the Cavs end up putting up more wins just based on the fact that back when Miami first started with the, the big three, you know, they started off the first season like nine and eight, and then, you know, we had over a 20-game winning streak. So I think LeBron, they'll get warmed up with Caleb and Kyrie, and I think things are going to start looking good for them. Okay, so you, you, would, you would not take the $100,000? Not bet. at all, no. Alanis, what do you think? I would go with the Heat, but, I mean, I don't have $100,000 to bet, and I'm not much of a better anyway, but I would go with the Heat. Well, so Jet's saying, Jet's saying hell no, basically. Yeah, and no. Allie and, and Alanis, you guys are saying for the heat, but nobody's putting any money on it. You, you guys aren't that confident at oh, all? Oh, actually, okay. Hey, $50. I put, I put my next check. 50 I put my next two weeks I, I'm pretty frugal. Um, yeah. I don't know. Hey, I'm I like, much I like better. Betting. All right, hey, well, uh, you, guys, you guys went out on a limb there, the heat. You know, could do it. It, it could finish better than the Cavs. Sure. I think I, I would definitely take the Cavs in the, in the playoffs, so I think by that time uh, they'll, yeah, they'll really have it flowing. But I do think it'll take the Cavs a little bit longer than it'll take the yeah, Heat when they got LeBron, sure. just because some more younger guys. Different pieces have definitely never played together. Uh, I'm going to give Allie and Alanis the point on this one. Going into our last rapid fire of the night, this one will come in the form of a classic caption this. Guys, take a look at this photo of Chandler Parsons taken during his recent trip to Starbucks. No, notice anything off here? Well, the, bar, the, the barista, excuse me, confused Parsons for Mav star Dirk Nowitzki. Two points for the best caption this on this one. What do we got here? So uh, I definitely have to go with Parsons Spice Latte. Okay, I like it. Audience, nothing? No. Parsons Spice Latte? Yeah. yeah. I, say, I say you have to say hashtag intern flow. He's Dirk's intern. He's bringing him coffee. Okay. He's, he's still the backseat guy. I mean, Dirk's the head. All right. All right. I like that. Alanis, yeah, you got one? I mean mugging. I mean, he looks kind of mad. And you've got the pun there, like a coffee mug. So okay. mean mugging. Okay. Mean mugging with the, with the pun there? All right. Yeah. Any, anything else before I...
Decide a winner for tonight? Hey, he's wearing that Drake hat. I think he wants Drake to come be his fanboy at his games, too. Uh, Drake, Drake's got too, he's got too many other guys that, that he's already on uh, right now. Fact, what, he's Toronto, an Toronto uh, Ken, Kentucky, Kentucky as well. Dude, he warms up with Kentucky. Wouldn't be surprised. He does warm up with the, uh, <laughs> the runner-up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I think I'm, I'm going to go with the uh, Parson Spice Latte with, hey, with Jet hey, on this one. Hey. All right, get Jet, first time on the show this semester. Hey. He, he's going to come out with the yeah. win. Uh, Ali, uh, Lannis, thanks for coming on the show tonight, guys. Jet, I think we have time for 30 seconds of FaceTime for you. You got anything for us? Uh, yeah, I could probably go off on a limb on something. Um, so, of course, the NFL is exciting. Rogers, my boy, just had six CDs. I was really hoping he'd break the record, but the Packers took him out. Um, I think, really, the Cardinals are screwed now. Uh, I don't know. I really couldn't tell you who's going to be a Super Bowl champion. Watch out for the Seahawks, who are still trash, but actually might come oh, through it in the trash. playoffs. Man, I'm about to take those points back. Hey, man. <laughs> Do it. Hey, hey, Seahawks not doing so good right now. But I think, you know, I can't go with the Broncos. I don't even know who's going to the Super Bowl this year. There's no clear favorite, honestly. Hey, and I think, and that, I makes, it. I think that makes it more fun. And I love it. Yep. All right, guys, uh, that's going to do it. Uh, again, uh, Allie, Jet, Alanis, guys, thanks for coming on the show. Jet, hopefully we'll have you back on the show next week. But that's all the time we have for tonight's show. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. As always, we'll be right back here, same place, same time next week. For everyone in the studio, Master Control, tonight's panel, and myself, have a good night. We'll see you all next week. Bam. There you go. Yeah, I think, I think we... Had some fumbles with the audience reactions. <laughs> Thank you.